Hello and welcome to The Postcard Professor, where we take complex ideas and explain them in the space of a postcard. I have a problem to work through today that comes from basic fluid statics. The problem is a straight wall that has a gate in it, and that gate rotates about this point. The water comes up to some level here. The distance between the water level and the pin of the gate is h. And the length of the gate is another 3 halves h. And we don't really care too much what happens below this gate. So we'll just assume that there's ground here. So I want to do three things. First, I want to sketch the pressure of the water acting on this wall. Second, I want to calculate the force on this gate. And finally, I want to calculate the moment about the pin. This first one is relatively simple. We know that pressure is proportional to rho, g, and h. So assuming that we are talking about water and that we're on Earth near sea level, all that we need to know is the depth of the water, this h value. It's a little misleading to use h both here and here. So instead of using h, I'm going to rewrite this as p is equal to rho g y. And I need to define what I mean by y. So the first step for any problem is going to be to define the coordinates that we're going to be using. So I'm going to choose y equals 0 to be equal with my water level and to be positive downwards. This is completely arbitrary. I can choose whatever I want, but it makes this equation easy so that pressure is 0 at atmosphere and increases as we go downward. So now I can sketch this quite simply, because we all know what a line looks like. To calculate the force, first off, we need to know that force is equal to pressure times area, in a very simplistic sense. In actuality, our pressure is changing over our area, so we have to be a little more specific here. And what I mean by that is we can talk about a differential force, if not the total force. So if I choose one small segment here where my pressure can be considered constant, then I can calculate a equivalent df that's equal to the pressure times a differential area. So we don't know enough yet to do our calculation. We need to relate this area to something to do with y. And I'm going to say that our differential area is equal to the width multiplied by some differential y. So we assume that our width is constant in this direction, and I'm going to call this width w. So this allows us to write a differential force is equal to our pressure multiplied by the width times dy. So now the question is, how do we get from these differential forces to our total force? This is where calculus comes in. We can say that our force is equal to the integral of our differential forces. And we need to define our bounds here. So we're going to go from y is equal to h all the way down to y is equal to 5 halves h. I can't say this here because we're in units of f. But we can rewrite this as the integral of pressure w dy. And now I can say that this is integrated from h to 5 halves h. We said w was a constant here, and we know what p is. So now we can rewrite this as w times the integral from h to 5 halves h of rho g y dy. Doing just a little more work, we can move these outside of the integral as well. And this integral is easy to perform. To go any further, we need to actually plug in some numbers. I'm going to say that h is 10 meters, w is 1 meter, rho is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, and finally, g is 9.8 meters per second squared. Plugging all this in, we end up with, and this will be multiplied by 25 meters squared minus 10 meters squared. Plugging this into my calculator, 
we end up with roughly two and a half million. Writing out the units, we get rid of the cubic meters and end up with kilogram meters per second squared. And this unit right here is exactly a newton, which is exactly what we need. Next, we calculate the moment. And the moment is going to be the integral of some differential moments. So what do our differential moments look like? Well, we need some moment arm multiplied by some differential force. Our moment arm here, we need to write in terms of y. Our moment arm is around this point right here. So we can say that this is y minus h. So r is equal to y minus h. Okay, so we write the rest of this out using the df that we have above. We'll move all of our constants outside the integral. So now our moment is equal to, and we end up with this expression. Once we get here, it's a relatively simple matter to plug in all of the values, and we end up with the following. 22,050,000 Newton meters.